Adam Drake here and want to talk a little bit today about the importance of maintaining your RC cars. I did a video a little while back talking about new car blues, how sometimes when you build a brand new car or brand new kit or even rebuild your car, it doesn't always handle like your old faithful car that you've been racing. I see this a lot of times where guys will fully rebuild a car right before a big race. They go to the big race and they're like, man, it just didn't feel like what it did leading up to the race. So we have a video about uh, new car blues um, and basically the importance of your drivetrain being broken in. But now I wanna do one that is basically old car blues and why you should maintain your car. And a lot of the reasons are the same, um, but just the exact opposite of what I mentioned in the new car blues. So as you run your car and as the drivetrain gets broken in, there en ends up being more mechanical bind within your drivetrain. And some mechanical bind is good. It gives the car support. It gives it stability. But as the car gets past that point of kind of peak or optimum and the outdrives start to get cupped out, it will make the car drive really, really stiff. So basically you want the car to be able to accelerate through bumps, move, roll through the turn. And if the outdrives get really worn, it's gonna make it wanna always kind of ride in that worn area or in the grooves of the outdrive. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it drive really stiff and rigid through the bumps. It's gonna create good forward drive because it's keeping the chassis really flat, but it's not gonna allow it to transfer weight. It's not gonna steer as much getting into the turn. And then the, the even more important thing as far as why you wanna maintain your car is consistency. Now, you build your car or rebuild your car and you go through a phase where it's not very good because it needs to get broken in. And then for a long stretch of time, it is really good. And then when you get past that, it gets really bad again. So if you rebuild, maintain your car, you look for the things, like I mentioned in the drivetrain, another really important thing is the shocks, which I'll get to in a minute. But you wanna have consistency. Every time you go to the track, you wanna be able to kind of do your best and your car requires maintenance to do that. You don't want to go to the track practice, run a gallon of fuel, and by the end of the day, you almost are running worse lap times than you did at the beginning. It's, it's not because you have less experience. You just ran a gallon of fuel. You should be hitting your lines. Everything should be better, but sometimes it can come down to the lack of maintenance on your car is hindering your performance. So while it's great to run as much fuel as possible, if you run more fuel, you're gonna have to do a bit more maintenance to, you gotta make sure that your talent and your equipment are kind of both up to par. Another really important thing is the shocks. Obviously you want to adjust and tune the shock oil. If you're running the emulsion caps, you'll wanna re-bleed your shocks often if the weather has changed quite a bit. But something that I feel can be overlooked is shock boots. You want to make sure that the shock boots don't have any rips or tears. If they do, it'll allow dust and dirt to kind of get into the cartridge or the seal pack and it'll damage the O-rings. It'll allow dirt into the oil or scratch the shock shafts. So you want to make, make sure you check and maintain your shock boots and also that you check and replace from time to time your O-rings in the shocks. Because what happens is the silicone oil that you're using in the shocks will attack the silicone O-rings. So I use a Protec blue grease. Um, it's just a O-ring grease. That's what I use on my shocks. Um, I go ahead and I'll put that on my pit board kind of work it around, drop the O-rings in it, work it all around so that you get a really nice coat of that O-ring grease before you build, uh, build the shocks or put new O-rings in. 
And what that's doing is it's going to help keep the oil off the O-rings. So the O-rings are still going to be really smooth. Everything's going to function and it's going to be lubricated. But over time, if the oil gets on the O-rings, which it's going to happen, the O-rings will start to swell. And as they swell, it will basically, um, I guess the terminology is stiction, but it basically will just increase friction within the shocks. If the shocks have more friction, just like the drivetrain, it's going to make everything drive a little bit stiffer. It's not going to go through the bumps quite as well. So those are two really, really um, key parts, drivetrain and shocks. Also, center drivetrain. So on the Mugen buggy and truck, we use dog bones now, which have uh, the least amount of friction. They allow the center diff to bleed power, accelerate through bumps, give it really good grip. But over time, the drive shafts, the pins need to be replaced. As they get flat spotted, you have more surface area, more friction, and it's going to make the center diff drive and feel like it's a little bit thicker. So those are three kind of key areas that, that I really like to focus on in order to keep my car consistent from whether it's race day or practice day, and you have to learn what works best for you, how often you feel it's best for you to replace your O-rings, or how often um, it works best for you to either shift your outdrives and drive shafts or put in new drive shafts and outdrives. Um, there's no real set amount of time. It depends on the conditions. It depends on how hard you drive or how easy you drive, but you gotta find what works best for you and understand that it's not always the setup or the pistons or the oil. Once you find a good baseline for yourself, it should be pretty good and consistent from track to track as long as you stay up on the maintenance in those key areas to keep your vehicles running very consistent and to the best of their ability.